in Romans chapter number 14 and verses number 12. Well, let's read verse 11. For it is written, As I, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12 says, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. That is a scripture that matches over in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 when uh, he says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ uh, that uh, everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. That jumps back to Corinthians chapter 3 when he talks about uh, their, their bads will be burned up and the good will survive the fire. Makes you wonder how much good we're going to have left. Amen. How much of our works and labors will go up in ashes. But in that verse number 12, it talks about that so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. I think personally between here and heaven somewhere, uh, somewhere in the sky, we'll have the judgment seat of Christ. The reason because of that, there'll be no sin in heaven. And God will judge all that before he takes place. And when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, he's not judging us for our sins. I ain't God, I'm glad God forgive us of our sin. You ask me I'm why, I'm happy, I'll tell you why. God forgave me. He washed my sins in the blood of Christ. My sins is gone. Uh, they're cast in the sea of God's forgiveness, and they, they'll never be brought up against me no more. And he washed them away. But we will be judged according, not our sins, but we are judged according to our works. And all the things that we've done before we got saved, God washed that away and washed it in his blood. But since we got saved, and the life that we've lived, we will have to face God for that. Amen. And the thoughts that I want to give you tonight, you know, this one verse that I give you, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. This verse shall, should really arrest our attention. It ought to grab hold of our attention that we're going to have to give an account to God. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that kept me out of trouble when I was a kid. And uh, my dad was on the road all the time preaching meetings, and my mother pretty well raised us. And there's one thing that kept me out of a lot of trouble. Because I know if I got in trouble, I was going to have to go home and face my mother. Amen. I know if I got in jail, my mother was going to be the one to come there and get me. And there's a lot of things I wouldn't do, a lot of things that the other people did, and I'd back out because I knowed I'd have to face and give an answer to my mother. But you know, as Christians, just the fact that we're going to have to give an answer to God ought to arrest of our attention. Amen. And, uh, you know, sometimes, don't it make you nervous when you get to thinking about you're going to have to stand before somebody? I remember, I remember our tags, our tags run out on their car, and on Kay's car, and, uh, and she was driving through town, the police pulled her over, and, and uh, he, she, did, she thought, well, I ain't speeding, what's wrong? And he come up and he said, ma'am, I don't know if you know it or not, but your tags is out. And she said, well, I didn't know it, my husband takes care of that. And he said, I don't care whether your husband does or not, you're driving the car, and you're responsible to check your tags and stuff like that. So he gave her a ticket. He said, now, if you'll go before the judge, get your tags changed, go before the judge, said he will, uh, he'll knock it off. And uh, so she come home, raring at me, and fussing like you was talking about this morning. She come home, fussing at me, he said, you've let them tags run out, you know how they do. And so when the time came... When, when the time came to go to the court, Brother Mike, she said, don't forget you got a court date on August the 20th. I said, I don't have a court date on August the 20th. And that judge does not want to see me. He wants to see you. <laughs> and she got up that morning, she was a nervous wreck. You know why? She's going to have to go before the judge, give him the count for not having tags. Amen. It's my fault. I'll take the credit for it, but because I always do all that stuff. But what I'm saying is she got the ticket. She was going to have to give an answer. She was nervous. Amen. And just my thoughts of just standing before God, the rest is my attention. Amen. I'm talking about a God that they talked about a while ago, same yesterday and today and forever. God that does not lie. God knows all things. You know, you ever try to get around your parents? <laughs> Amen. Tell them a bunch of junk, you know, and kind of go around here. Tell them half the truth and trying to go around around the earth. My friend, knowing all the time you're going to get caught. Amen. I remember, remember when I was growing up, my boys, I'll give you three things about this in a minute, but I remember when my boys was growing up, we had an old pickup truck set out there in the yard. And if they done something wrong, or if I needed to talk to them about something, I'd tell them to go out there and sit in the truck. Boy, they hated that. Sometimes I'd leave them sitting out there in 30 and 45 minutes. 
My wife said, they're sitting out there in the truck. I said, I know it. Let them squirm a little bit. And they hated to go to that truck because when they got in that truck, it was just me and them. Amen. <laughs> they couldn't blame nobody else. It's just me and them talking. And uh, my boy mentioned the other day, uh, he, he, told his, uh, he told his son, he said, I tell you what, I think I need to get a no pickup truck and put in the yard like my daddy did. <laughs> Let you go out there and sit a while. Amen. And uh, they would sit, and when I'd come, boy, they, they, they was a nervous wreck because they didn't know. Sometimes they didn't know what I was going to talk to them about. And you know what? God's keeping our record. God knows everything. He knows our uprising, our downsetting. He knows all about us. And in, in these days that we live, we're in a day of unfaithfulness. We're in a day where people just kind of backed off and slacked out and everything. But you know what will motivate you? When you realize that there's going to be a day that you give an account for your life. Amen. You're going to give an account for the things that's done. He said the things done in your body. Amen. Things that done to, to our bodies and with our bodies. And, and the things that we've allowed God to do through our bodies. We're going to give an account for that. Not only our bodies, but our spirit and soul. We're going to give an account for that. Amen. And so in this verse of Scripture, uh, these verses uh, addresses an event that, that we need a daily to keep in mind. You know, as I said a while ago, daily, I kept it in my mind. When I was a kid, I'm going to have to face mother. i tell you what I really hated is when mother said, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm just going to wait till your daddy got home. But I know that I was in big trouble then. <laughs> Amen. And, and, but, you know, uh, this event of giving account of our lives. Now, note three things. I'll give you three things. You can write them down, help you sometime, other. I thought about three things in that one verse, verse number 12. First of all, I thought about the people of this verse. He said, so then every one of us, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You know who's going to face God? We are. Every one of us that are saved. Now, there won't be no lost people here. But every one of us that are saved by the grace of God, we will go before God at the judgment seat of Christ. There ain't no exemptions. You know, you can pay. If you got enough money, you can pay yourself out some of these judges sometimes. If you got enough money, you can uh, work through some kind of lawyer, and they'll get you off. But in this judgment day, every one of us individually will have to stand before God and give an account of ourselves unto the Lord. That's a sobering thought, ain't it? Every person, every person will have to do this and give an account. No one is exempt. No one exempt from this, uh, this place. Amen? Nobody uh, is exempt from standing before God. Sometimes we say, well, let my husband speak for me. Well, that's one day you're going to speak for yourself. Your wife can't speak for you. Your son can't speak for you. Your daughter your mom, your dad, there's a day that you personally is going to have to come up before God and stand before the Lord. Amen? And uh, every person, uh, it talks about here, every person, a person of every kind, of every age, uh, no matter what part of history you came through, he said everyone uh, will give an account unto God for himself. Each one of us as an individual will give an account to the Lord. Just like, just like she thought she could get by and I'd have to go before the judge. No, she had to go before the judge because it was her time. It was her account. And the scripture says, for we must all appear. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And you know, uh, many live as though this will never take place. Sometimes we think, well, we can get by with the preacher. <laughs> as long as Brother Doug don't know about it. Amen, or as long as somebody else don't know about it. You ever lay out of church and on the way to church the next time you say, I hope nobody asks us where we was last Sunday. <laughs> well, it don't matter where I know where you're at last Sunday or not, God knows. Amen. And you know, sometimes we come up with some of the flimsiest excuses. You know, it don't matter what we try to get by with. Even in this life, it don't matter what we try to get by with. It just seems like it always catches up with us. I remember one time we had we lived at uh, the other place we lived, had, and and uh, the the boys found a, a rabbit's nest, and it had two or three little baby rabbits in there. And they told me, said we we found this nest, got baby rabbits. Well, leave them alone, leave them alone, let them grow. I said, don't be bothering them, aggravating them, and everything. Well, it wasn't three or three days coming there, and my, one of my boys said, Daddy said them rabbits is gone. I said, Well, what happened to them? We don't know. They're gone. 
And I said, did you boys bother them things? And they said, no, we didn't bother them. They're gone. I said, well, they ain't grown up that big enough to get out of the nest and be gone. Something happened to them or something got them, you know. So they said, well, there's some, some wild animal got them, you know. They had this excuse. And, uh, and so I rocked on, what, a month later, I guess, we was pulling out in the meeting and headed up the road, and them boys were sitting in the back seat of the van. And, and, and I said something. Uh, we, we, I said, there's an old uh, dead dog or something. I don't remember what we was talking about. And, and come up in that least boy of mine. He said, they're dead like them rabbits that brother throwed in the pond. Amen. <laughs> I looked back at him and I said, oh, I thought some wild animal got that. Amen. You know, you always get caught up with that stuff. Amen. No matter what you do. And you know, we think we get by with from man. We think we really get by from ourselves. I'll tell you, God's keeping it all down. Amen. I heard one preacher, I don't know if it's true or not, but I had one preacher who said, I believe God's got an angel walking around behind everybody writing, writing all this stuff down. But God is keeping a record. Right. And every one of us, every one of us, my friend, and it's a, it's a thought that, that we uh, think we don't have to answer. We think it's not going to happen. But it says here in the Word of God, everyone, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. So the people that's going to be for this judgment seat of Christ is me and you. You know, when you think about that, it'll, it'll straighten you out a little bit. Amen? It'll straighten you up a little bit. You know, you, you ever seen people, I, I, when I was pastoring church years ago, you know what happened? You'd, you'd be in a store somewhere and have Walmarts back in, but whatever store we was in, they had big K's back in. And uh, different little stores, some of y'all Woolworths, I remember them, I'm so old, but uh, they, they, you know what, you'd, You'd be in there, and somebody would say, Oh, Lord, yonder comes the preacher. <laughs> you know, they'd hide from you. They'd try to hide and everything else. And uh, some of them, the only time they ever cleaned their house up was when the preacher come for eat with them. Amen. And they said, Preacher's coming. You, gotta, you know what? And I thought many times, Listen, you, uh, you ain't going to have to give an account to me. You're going to have to give an account to God. Right. You, yourself, is going to have. Now, that ought to sober you up. That ought to make you think about that. That ought to go through your mind every day that you live, everything you do, the decisions you make. I'm going to have to give an account for God for this decision I make. You young folks, every decision you make, you're going to have to give an account. You think you're going to have to answer your prayers? You're going to have to ask God one of these days. Amen. So he said, he said the people of this first. And it talks about, it's uh, 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians 5, we must all, Romans 10, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And then, then I thought about this, not only the people, but the personal side of this thing. He said, we shall give an account of himself to God. You know, we're good about answering for somebody else. You know, it. we're good about judging everybody else. In fact, it says, in fact, it says in verse 12, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Verse 13 says, let us therefore judge, uh, let us not therefore judge one another uh, anymore. You know, we're good. We're good. So, whoa, well, well, what have they done? Look at that. I wonder, where they're at. I wonder what this, that. Look what they've done. Look at all this stuff. And sometimes we need to go home and look in the mirror <laughs> and realize that we're not going to give it to cat. You know, when you get to heaven, you get to heaven, you'll say, well, I, I, uh, Brother Josh said it was okay. It don't matter what Brother Josh says. You're going to have to give an account to God for what this says. Amen. For what this says. And we're going to have to give an account. It shall, shall means it will happen. We'll give an account of yourself or himself. We'll not answer for others. We'll only answer for you. Your actions and your own life and your own heart, your own ways, the way you think about it, the way you handle the Word of God, you'll have to answer for your prayer life. You'll have to answer for your giving life. You'll have to answer for your separation life. You'll have to answer for your Bible life, church life, every bit of that stuff. Uh, the world. Since you got saved, the attitude and the actions and, and the things of the world, you're going to have to give an account for all that before God. Amen? Things that you've done in your body. Amen. Come on now. Somebody said, well, it don't matter. It don't matter about your body as long as your spirit's right. Well, if, you, if your spirit's right, your body's going to be right. right. Amen? If your body's right, it's because your spirit's right. Yes. Amen? Come on now, help me out. Huh? Uh, and so he said, uh, the, the, the personal side is it that we have got to give an account of everything we do, not just part of the things we do. Amen. But everything that we do and uh, our attitude. Uh, and you know what really, what really shakes me up sometimes? Uh, we're going to have to give an account of how we handle this. Amen. How we handle this, how we believe this. People twist this book up all the time. 
Amen. See, you can make it say what you want it to say. But it says what it's going to say, and it means what it says. Amen? Somebody said, I think the teacher this morning, he said, sometimes people say, well, I don't say it that way. It don't matter how you say it. It's just exactly what God said. Amen? My daddy used to say, well, I don't, I'd say, I don't say it that way. He said, you don't have to say it that way. As long as you're under my roof, you say it like I say it. <laughs> Amen? And if you don't want to say it like I say it, hang your hat somewhere else. That was my daddy's favorite saying. If you don't like things around here, hang your hat somewhere else. Amen. I hung it one night and was back the next day. Amen. I kind of liked poem. I, I, I thought I liked it away. When I got away, I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. You know, sometimes we think, well, I want to be on my own. But I tell you, when you get the thing about the judgment seat of Christ, you don't want to be on your own. You want to line up with this right here just exactly like it said. So there's that there's that that personal side of this thing. We all got to do it, and the personal thing of this verse, we shall all give an account. Amen. We all shall give an account of ourselves before the Lord. Amen. Now I'm very I'm very I'm very uh, particular about finances. I'm very particular about keeping everything just right. I hate I hate a messed up checkbook. Amen. Amen. I don't have a debit card because I'd have a nervous breakdown. I don't know how in the world people handle them things. Amen. My boys are stopping by a Coca Cola on a de debit card. Then they go down the road and buy a candy bar on a debit card. I'm thinking that'd drive, drive me crazy trying to figure all that stuff out. I'm, I'm too much of a perfectionist and I want everything right. I want it right down to the penny. Right down to the penny. I, I want it. I remember when I took care of my father in law, I'd done all their financing and paid all their bills for 10 years. And uh, a lot of things was coming under the VA. If you ever dealt with the VA, you'll pull, a, pull all your hair out. Amen. And, and the VA, when they come, you don't ever know when they're going to check you. And the VA, when they come around and check your finances, for him, it had to be right down to the pity. And I'm, not, I'm talking about to the pity. <laughs> and if it didn't match it, you know what they did? They cut your check off till you found out that penny was. I mean, one time I was out two pennies. <laughs> I mean, I, I, hey, you ask Kay, I worked for a solid week, Brother Mike. I mean, I'd give a more nice search, went all the way back, trying to find them two pities. I like to wore myself out because I thought they're going to check, they're going to stop his check. I'm going to have to go through all that stuff again and get him all lined back up. And I worked and I worked and I worked, went to the bank, told this little girl, and I said, you got to help me. And the girl went back and checked everything. She said, preacher, I can't find it either. I said, well, it's got to be in there somewhere. It's got to be. I said, if they're going to stop my check. And I was a nervous wreck thinking over two pennies. I'm going to lose all this stuff over two pennies because I, have, I can't give an account for it. But you know what? When you get to heaven and, and you give account to God, he's got all the pennies in line. He's got it right down to the pennies. Every attitude of your life, those things that you said under your breath, those things that you said when you walked out of here and you didn't like so-and-so, amen. You didn't like him, you didn't like that. My friend, God's got all that stuff down. And in fact, you know what the Bible says of where, I think it's in Matthew, he's got every, every idle word. <laughs> every idle word. That means all them words didn't make no, didn't count and amount, amount to nothing. Amen. Just every idle word. Every idle word. Uh, I talk a lot, all the time anyway, and, and I fool with a guy that's got a car a lot, and sometimes we'll go, I'll help him go pick up cars. You know, if I'm at home, I'll go ride with somebody. We'll pick up a car and bring it back and, and everything, and, and they kid me all the time. And no, y'all don't believe this, but they kid me all the time. Said, I don't never shut up. And I talk all the time. Don't say amen, Miss Kay. Uh, but uh, they talk all the time. It's going up the road the other day, this guy named George, he said, he's a new guy. And he said, you know what they said about you, preacher? I said, what? He said, we won't have no trouble on this trip. We won't get bored because you're going to talk all the way up here and back. I said, you know why I talk all the way up and back? He said, why? I said, well, you won't say nothing. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and you know, but what I'm trying to say is, my friend, sometimes them idle words that we say that we don't think nobody hears, nobody cares, God's writing her down. Right. Amen. I mean, when this, when you think about this, it kind of, it kind of brings attention to me to be a little more attentive to my life, a little more attentive to the way I do and the way I give. And then let me give you something else. Look at the person of this verse. He, the people is us. So then, everyone, and then there's the personal thing, giving account of himself. But look at the person of the verse. What does it say? To God. To God. Well, that's a, that's a serious thought, ain't it? Every one of us must give an account to God. Amen? I'm talking about the one who knows all things. 
<laughs> he knows. He knows. He knows you when you was in the womb. He knows you when you come forth out of the womb. He knows you ever since you breathed your first breath. He knows everything about you all the way. In fact, the Bible said he's such a good God, he knows every step. Read it in the, in the, uh, uh, the Old Testament. He talks about God numbers our steps. Our days are numbered. Our steps is numbered. Right. Amen. I don't know how many steps I've took since I've been born. God does. Right. He's so attentive, he said he knows every hair that's on your head. He knows, fellas, some of all of how many you lost. Amen. I mean, that's very attentive to know how many hairs you've got on your head, how many steps you've made. Amen. Brittany, you got young ones. I guarantee you, I could ask you, how many steps that boy made since he got in the world? You'd say, <laughs> what did he ask me that for? He knows I don't know that, but God knows that. Amen. You know what that means? That means everything we do, every move we make, the attitude of our heart, the thinkings of our mind, things that we don't even let out, God sees our thoughts. Amen. <laughs> I know this is an unusual message to preach like this, but anyway, this is this is a sober, this is a sober and scary thing. As we think about, we we have to answer to God, not man. God knows. I think about uh, uh, if I can find this scripture. I think it's in uh, first first Corinthians chapter four. Yeah, here it is. First Corinthians chapter four. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of a steward that a man be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yea, I'm not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. Somebody said, boy, when Jesus comes, we're going to shout it out. Well, we'll shout after we pass the judgment seat of Christ. We'll probably shout it out a little bit. But up until then, he said, we won't be shouting it out and praising him until we went through this judgment. And boy, just think about that. And Paul said, I don't care. I don't even judge myself. He says, God, it judges me. And then he goes on, he says, the hidden things of darkness. That thus for you done in the dark. Amen. And he said to make faith, to make manifest. You know what the manifest means? Brings out the counsel of the heart. Those things that you think, well, nobody knows what I thought about that. Brother Josh gets up there and preach, and they say, well, who do you have to preach for? Oh, I didn't want to hear him. Don't like to hear him. You say all that. You can say, you probably said that about me. Uh, but you know what? Nobody may never hear that, Brother Josh, but God hears it. The very intense of your heart, whether you say it out loud or not. He said, we will be manifest. You know what that means? going to bring out. You know, there are some things that we, we done forgot about that God's going to bring out at that judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And you say, well, preacher, why does it matter? We're going to go to heaven anyway because you're going to suffer loss. Right. You're going to suffer loss. You say, well, it don't matter. Just all go to heaven. You can't stand it now because somebody's got more than you got. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You, if you want to sit, give you you got a daughter and two sons, give your daughter $50, give them boys $20, and they'll have a fit. Why didn't I get that much? That's the way we are. We think it don't matter. It does matter. Can you imagine getting to heaven? Brother Brian, we all got crowns to lay at his feet, and you ain't got none. <laughs> Amen. Amen? I don't know about you. I want to hear him say, well done. Well done, now, good and faithful. I know I know I'm going to fail, and I'm a long way from from where I need to be in all of the things. But you know, you just keep pushing, try and do everything with your heart, because I know there's a day. There is a day that I'm going to have to stand before the Lord. You know, uh, account to man is is difficult, makes us squirm. But can you imagine facing God? Huh? And here's another thing about it. And I believe I can prove this. We're all going to be there. Amen. We're all going to be there. If you've ever been to court, if you've ever been to court, I've never been to court for no reason for myself. Well, I did go one time up in Ohio. Uh, uh, Ohio's a common state. <laughs> I don't want to talk about all that. But anyway, uh, I got caught with a gun in the car and they put me in jail. I, I said this morning, been in jail one time, been in jail two times. I forgot about that. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you have to, you have to go before a man, you know, it's bad enough, but can you imagine, can you imagine just going before God? Amen? 
And, and, and then I thought about, well, you know, you won't be able to deceive man or God. You won't be able to lie to God. You won't be able to fool to God. He knows it. He knows all of it. I used to go to the courts over there, and, and you'd see these people. We have to go sometime with Brother Rocky's group. You have to go to the court with them. You know what? They'll get in there, and they'll say, well... <laughs> You know, I, I, I've never done this, I've never done that. i just done this, you know, and they'll try to fool that judge. I remember Brother Rocky one time, them guys coming over there, and he said, Brother Mike, sit in here with me, and was interviewing some new guys. I never will forget right, Brother Rocky said. That guy come in here, and he started out all kinds of excuses. Brother Rocky looked at him and said, well, just shut up a minute. He said, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you're going to tell me. I've heard it all. I've heard every excuse. I've heard everything that's going on. And you can't fool me. I know what you are and what you're going through and what you've been doing. So you might as well just tell me the truth. Well, you know what? God knows all of it. He, we won't have a chance. But I believe you ever go to court and you're sitting there watching. Uh, you're sitting there watching uh, people come up and get judged. Even though you're mixed, <laughs> you're sitting there watching. You know what? I believe we'll all be there. And we'll see each other go and stand before God and give an account of ourselves. You can't blame it on nobody else. You can't blame it on the preacher. You can't blame it on nobody. If you if you ain't giving your all, if you're not if you're not using all your talents, if you're not giving like you're supposed to give, if you're not faithful, if you're doing things behind the scene, uh, all that's going to be brought out at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And we'll give an account for those things. You know, uh, uh, you won't be able to, uh, to fabricate, uh, fabricate some big story. You know, some of us is good at shooting the bull. <laughs> Amen? Come on now. You ever dealt with people and they just try to go all the way around the world just to find themselves and come all the way back around, you know? I remember, I remember, <laughs> I remember we was going through, uh, we was coming back from Georgia. We'd been to a funeral. The, the, past, the former pastor where I pastored, uh, died in Florida. He was preaching and died uh, at the service. And his daughters went to my church. And, and so me and one of the deacons, uh, we followed his daughters down to Florida to make sure they was okay and, and make arrangements to get him back home. And on the way back home, me and my deacon, we was just talking. We come up through Jacksonville, and we missed 10, and just kept going up 95. And I told him, I said, man, we missed that turn back there. And I said, we'll just go up 95, pick up 26, and go home. Well, we had to come through the curves over at Asheville, you know, toward Newport. We was coming through there, and I'm just swapping him curves. And all of a sudden, uh, Brother David, he said, I believe you just passed the state trooper. <laughs> I thought, man, I didn't even see him. And I looked up, and here's the blue light come up there flashing me. And, and off and he pulled over, and I pulled over, and he stopped me, got out, and he come up there, you know, and I had my stuff, handed it to him. He said, you in a hurry? I said, well, no, not really. I said, I'm not really in a hurry. And I told him what was done. We'd been to Florida trying to help this family and trying to get back and everything. And I said, a pastor church right down here in Knoxville. And man, I was just talking 90 mile an hour, Brittany. I was uh, uh, running my mall, just telling him all about that stuff and everything. And, and uh, he went back there and after I got through my long speech uh, he went back there and he come back up there and he handed me a license he said preacher he said do you think you could uh, ease on home and slow down a little bit I said I believe I could and he left dad and I went down the road that deacon never said a word about 10 miles down the road he said I don't know if God blessed you or you're the best bull shooter in the world amen that's <laughs> what he said he said you talked yourself out of that Amen. And, and, and you know what? You ain't going to be able to talk yourself out of nothing when you stand before God. I tell you, we'll all be stuttering before the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, we'll all be weeping and crying probably. And in fact, in fact, you know, it talks about uh, when we get to heaven, there'll be no more tears. And I'm telling you before, they, I tell you, when God's going to wipe the tears away, after the judgment seat of Christ. And after the great white Jones judgment, because we'll be at the great white throne judgment, and we'll see sinners and our love was just lost come before God and hear him say, Depart, I never knew you. And we'll weep at the judgment seat of Christ. And we'll weep at the great throne judgment. And then God will wipe away all of our tears from our eyes, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 22. But you know what? He talks about the truth will be manifested. He talks about, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You know, I wrote down two questions here over to Motel a while ago. What sort of account will you be able to give God? Will it be a life of faithfulness or disobedience? Be a life of, of in full hearted 
high for it. What kind of, what kind of giving record you'll be? One time somebody asked me, said, Preacher, said, do you keep up with all the people tithes in your church? I said, no. I said, that's 20 of God. God's keeping all that. If they don't tithe right, God will answer. They'll have to answer that to God. Ain't none of my business. That's 20 of them and God. Amen. Amen. Said, you keep up with everybody's Bible life? I said, nah. That's between them and God. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Amen. So then every one of us, and, and I don't know. I don't even know why the Lord wanted me to preach on that. I know he, he did. But uh, the sobering thought is, you know, and let me close with this. You know, pastors today, pastors today, they wear themselves to death over unfaithful people. Amen. Amen. Undedicated people, worldly people in the church. And they wear themselves to death. And they wear themselves to death. And they worry. You know what would change a lot of that? If we'd realize that we're going to have to give an account to God for our lives. Amen. I recognize that. I recognize every time I preach. And I try to be sober and serious about preaching. I've got thousands of outlines. That don't mean nothing to me. It means every service I preach, I want to make sure this is what God wants me to do. Why? Because every time I preach, I've got to give an answer for that. Every time I meet with somebody and talk to them and try to help them, I realize what I say and the direction I put them in, I'm going to have to give an account for God for the direction that I put them. Amen? And so, this, I hope this is just a sober thought. And if everybody would realize, okay, I'm going to have to give an account for God. And, you know, really, the biggest thing in our day right now with preachers is unfaithfulness. It really is. It really is. Everywhere I go, preachers, people, preachers talk about people, you know, not being faithful and all that stuff. You know, but, but if we could, and we think we get by. We think we get by. But you know what? If we told ourselves the only, our own excuse, we wouldn't believe it either. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If, we, if some of the things we do and some things we believe, we try to justify it. But if you ever went to the Word of God and said, okay, let's see what God thinks about this. See if this is right. See if it's okay. Amen. Not with the preacher. Not with my parents. Not with my husband. Why? But let's see if this is okay with God. Because, see, he's the one in the end you're going to have to give an answer to. Amen. Amen. If it don't, really don't on us, I think it would sober a lot of people up and they would be a little more determination and a little more active and a little more clean in the things of God. They'd be a little more motivated. Amen. Yeah. To realize that they're going to have to give an account to God. I made a promise to God years ago when I first started preaching. My sister, she gets on me all the time for traveling so much, going you know, they say it's your age. I don't know what age you got to do with it. But say it's your age and all this stuff. You need to quit. You need to slow down and do all this stuff. But you know, I made a, I made a, I made a promise to God. In March, soon in March, it'd be 57 years ago, in the basement of a church when I confessed my calling to preach, I made a promise to God. I said, you open the door, I'll go through it. So when he opens the door, what am I supposed to do? Turn it down? Change it? I figure if God opened the door, he's going to give me enough strength to do it and get there and, and do what I've got to do. And I made that promise to God, and I don't want to break it. What kind of promises have you made to God back in the past, and now you look back and you've kind of slipped up on them promises? Amen? That, how many promises you made right down here in these altars, and now you're not doing, you know, you've kind of slacked up on some of them things you promised committed to God. You've kind of slacked up. Well, God's going to remember that promise. God's going to remember that commitment you made and you're going to give an account to God for all the things that's done in our bodies. Amen. Ain't that sober? Amen. Well, I'm through. Let me give you this right quick. I think about the Word of God. I think about the Word of God. I was telling Brother Brian this. I thought I'd give an illustration last week. He talked about this boy and his daddy told him, he gave him a bucket. He said, go down to the creek. Go down to the creek and get to fill this bucket up with water. And he went down there and he dipped it in the lake he come flying back up to the house and had a hole in the bottom. When he got up to the house, all the water had run out by the time he got up there. He got up there and said, Daddy, all the water's gone out of this thing. He said, but it has. He said, go back and get another bucket full. He said, run a little faster this time. <laughs> and he went down and dipped the bucket, and here he come. By the time he got up there, all the water run out of the bottom because it had a hole in the bottom. And he got up there and he said, all the water's out again. 
He said, well, boy, he set the boy down there four times. Boy, come up there the fourth time. He said, hey, I don't know what to do. He said, all the water. We ain't got no water. All the water is out of the bucket. He said, yeah, but this bucket's cleaner than it's ever been. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes we feel nothing necessary about putting this in here. You can't hold on to it. That's why every day. But every day you do, we're washed by the water of his word. The more you, read, more you run this water, the more you put this water in your heart, the cleaner you're going to be. Amen. Amen. Simple thought. Just let that be. Thank you sometimes. Sober your heart up. I'm going to give an account unto God. Amen. Josh, I'm through. Come on. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.